Good evening. For our discussion on the fundamentalist modernist controversy, I'm going to talk about Harry Emerson Fosdick, an extremely influential modernist that Mark Knoll describes as the nation's best known preacher after Dwight L. Moody and Billy Graham. Harry Emerson Fosdick was born May 24th, 1878, and died October 5th, 1969. He was born in Buffalo, New York graduated Colgate University in 1900 and then attended and graduated from the Union Theological Seminary in 1904. Identifying with modernism early in his career, in college he gained the reputation as the Jesse James of the theological world, boasting later in life that he had never repeated the Apostles' Creed. In 1903, he was ordained a Baptist minister at the Madison Avenue Baptist Church in New York. In 1904, he moved to be the pastor of the First Baptist Church in Montclair, New Jersey, where he would stay until 1915. During World War I, Fosdick supported U.S. participation and volunteered as an army chaplain in 1917, serving in France. However, after the war, his opinion began to shift. During his armistice sermon on November 12, 1933, titled The Unknown Soldier, he called himself a gullible fool for his support and participation and finally renounced war and pledged that it would not happen again by saying, I renounce war and never again, directly or indirectly, will I sanction or support another unknown soldier in penitent reparation, I make you that pledge. From 1918 to 1925, Fosdick, still a Baptist, served as the minister of the First Presbyterian Church in New York, though he refused to become or stick to the Presbyterian beliefs. In an editorial in The Citizen on June 23, 1921, titled, Can the Church Be Bought?, the editor describes Fosdick like this. Harry Emerson Fosdick of the First Presbyterian Church of New York is a modern prophet, a great leader in his profession. When he speaks from pulpit and platform, his voice is heard. When he writes, what he writes is read. On May 22, 1922, he gave his infamous sermon, Shall the Fundamentalists Win? In this sermon, he shook the core beliefs of the fundamentalist faith. Belief in the virgin birth was unnecessary. The inerrancy of scripture is untenable, and the doctrine of the second coming is absurd. Obviously, this caused a religious sensation. The sermon was distributed throughout the country to 130,000 ordained Protestants, paid for by John D. Rockefeller. This ignited the controversy, bringing the conflict between the fundamentalists and the modernists to the forefront. In the wake of the scandal, he left the First Presbyterian Church. In October 1930, he became the minister of Riverside Church in New York City, which was established by the Rockefellers, where he remained for his last 16 years of active ministry, and it remained his home church for the last 28 years of his life. During this time, he was also a national radio preacher on the National Vespers Hours, reaching millions. J. Gresham Machen, the fundamentalist intellectual, said of uh, Fosdick, the question is not whether Mr. Fosdick is winning men, but whether the thing to which he is winning them is Christianity, emphasizing that Machen believed the modernists weren't practicing Christianity, but an entirely separate religion. Uh, Fosdick was twice on the cover of Time magazine, first time in September 21st, 1925, and the second time on October 6, 1930. Uh, as another contribution to society, he reviewed the first edition of the book Alcoholics Anonymous in 1939, influencing the uh, Alcoholics Anonymous movement for years to come. While I don't agree personally with Fosdick's opinions or his stance on Christianity, his contributions to modernism are obvious.